Welcome to the Disney Fantasy Dining in Depth video. I am here in Meridian. This is the bar in between the specialty restaurants Remy and Paolo. Do you hear that rumbling? We're getting ready to pull in to Castaway Key, which is very exciting, Disney's private island. But in this video, we are gonna go through all the places you can get food here on the Disney Fantasy. So we'll start with the two specialty restaurants. Palo is their Italian restaurant. It offers brunch on sea days as well as dinner on the other nights of the week. You do need to get a reservation in advance, so be sure to check out How to Book Activities video on the Trips with Angie YouTube channel. But here, let me tell you more about Palo. Palo has a beautiful dining room inspired by Italy that is a mix of tables and booths that give you just a little bit more privacy. The second level is elevated, so you still have an ocean view, and it has this really special table that looks like you're dining right in San Marco Square. In terms of the brunch menu, you have specialty drinks. All of the restaurants will have specialty drinks that are affiliated with that restaurant for extra charge. You have antipasti selections as well as soups that are available. You buy a pre-fixed menu, so you're paying one price, and then the waiter will kind of take you through your options, how to order, what you can order. There were a couple of complaints during our stay from the Palo Brunch folks that said service was a little bit slow, but I think that's because everything is prepared a la minute. That's the fancy way of saying when you order it, they prepare it. So it will take a little bit longer than the main dining rooms where everything is served banquet style, just ready to go. As you can see here, you have a lot of different selections. Uh, tip, lasagna is only available on the brunch menu. So if you want to try the Palo lasagna, you have to go at brunch. And I love that that's like a little secret. Now, in terms of dinner, you have a couple different options. You can do the prefix menu for $45. And you can see here that will give you choices. So you pick one antipasta, the calamari or the buffalo mozzarella. You pick one salad. Uh, the, I would recommend the baby arugula. And then you can pick the pasta, the chicken, the salmon, or the beef tenderloin. And then you have an option for dessert, the souffle, the limoncello tart. Uh, and then you can add wine tastings with it for $70. The other option is just to order like you're in a regular restaurant. So you can see here, all of these have prices affiliated with them as you kind of go through. So you can just pick and choose what you want. We found that prefix menu a little too constricting. So we ordered on our own. So we got the bread and nut squash ravioli, which were absolutely incredible and one of the pizzas, which was also very good. The butternut squash ravioli had crumbled up cookies on them, kind of like the cookies you get when you fly Delta, and it added this like sweet, savory crunch. The scallops were also incredible. The risotto was a little thick under it, but had very good flavor, but the scallops were cooked perfectly. I would have liked to see a little more sear on the top. I like them a little more caramelized, but I will sacrifice the sear to have them cooked perfectly. This is the asabuco. Again, the ravi the risotto underneath was a little dense, but the asabuco was cooked perfectly. You didn't need a knife. You could just cut it with a fork. Super tender, very flavorful. Definitely recommend. But you have a lot of meat options if you want to try those. They also have sides available to share among the table. We tried the asparagus. It was very good. I would Next time I think I would get the wild mushrooms because the mushrooms on the pizza were so good. Now they have a long list of after dinner drinks you can get for an extra charge. There's also a seat of cheese plate and the desserts. They will come to you in the middle of dinner to ask you if you want the souffle since those are cooked to order and they do take 20 to 25 minutes. So just be prepared for that. Remy is the French restaurant. Absolutely incredible food. It offers a brunch option, a dessert option, as well as a dinner option. So lots of choices when it comes to Remy's. I'm gonna keep most of the Remy experience a surprise, but I definitely highly recommend you check it out. It's an absolutely beautiful dining room. Remy's is themed after the fancy French restaurant from Ratatouille and serves brunch, dinner, and then has an optional dessert seating. We went to the brunch, and as part of the brunch, you have two champagne tastings you can add on. The prices is going to vary depending on what champagnes are included. Now, I'm going to show you pictures of what we had at our brunch, but I'm not going to tell you what everything is because this menu changes, and that's something to keep in mind. When you look in the app, when you look at people's experience, you might have something different when you go to Remy's. But one thing I did want to point out in the app is what is consistent is the two price fix menu. So they have what they call the French price fix menu for $125 with, with the set courses or the quote unquote American or Chef Scott 
price fix menu for $125. But if that doesn't quite work for you, if that's too limiting, kind of the same way we felt about, felt about Palo, you can order items by themselves and just pay for that price. Now to the included food. One of the things that sets Disney Cruise Line apart is their rotational dining. They have three main dining rooms and you rotate among the three dining rooms. Your wait staff all come with you so you still get that wonderful benefit of getting to know your dining team but you change locations from animators palette to Royal Court to Enchanted Garden. So let's go through each of those restaurants and what makes them different and exciting. Deck three midship, you'll find Royal Court. I think this is the fanciest of the three included restaurants. It has these great whimsical touches like the carriage bread bowl and the waiters will wear tuxedos or prince outfits for dinner. So we'll start with dinner, even though it does serve breakfast and lunch as well. This was the menu for our second night at Royal Court. We were on a seven night cruise. We had two nights at Royal Court. This was our second night. We started with the lightly breaded baked eggplant this was not good. Something went wrong. It wasn't creamy. It wasn't cheesy. Same thing with the Oyster Rockefeller. Again, not good. It was just a disappointing night for appetizers for us on this menu. Then we went ahead and soldiered on to lobster night. So this is the night that the oven baked lobster tail is available. It was a little overcooked for my taste, but I appreciate that they grilled it. They added some spices. It had really good flavor. Uh, I also like my lobster a little less done. The red snapper was very good. It had a Mediterranean sauce that my husband really, really liked. Also, we got the vegetarian red pumpkin and coconut curry. That had a lot of flavor. I was very impressed with the vegetarian options. There were two or three vegetarian options every night. I also tried the pea risotto with pesto. That was very good. It was creamy. It wasn't too dense. So they did a really nice job with that. So I, I was really impressed with the number of entrees that were available this evening, the variety of entrees that were available. And then of course they have on the menu all the extra drinks you can buy. If you scroll all the way down through that, you get to the dessert. I was over the moon for this Sunday. Chocolate mint ice cream is my favorite. Meringue is my favorite. It's like they made this Sunday just for me. The chocolate on top was even in Andy's mint. Like I, I was over the moon. My husband was disappointed with the apple pie. It wasn't juicy. It was dry. Uh, but the first night when we ate at Royal Court, we got this fun envelope that gave the dessert menu. It felt very fancy. They delivered it like we were a princess. And if you don't find anything on the dessert menu you like, you can always get a Mickey bar. To the second restaurant is Animator's Palace. Now this is a interactive explosion. We actually skipped the first night because I do not like turtle talk. It's too much going on. But the second night we got to draw a character and we drew our waiter and it was phenomenal. Highly recommend. Be sure you outline the head and the legs. It makes the experience so much better. So in terms of the meal and appetizer, we had to try the tuna. I absolutely love seared raw tuna and this did not disappoint. It was high quality tuna. It was well seasoned. If you're a sushi fan, I think you're really going to like it. The lobster bisque was pretty good. I'm kind of picky about lobster bisque and I enjoyed this. It did have a nice little piece of lobster in it. So that was very fun. Um, with the bread service, every night they have like a different bread service and a different dip, big sauce. You can request butter if you'd like it. Just let your team know if you're a person that's going to want butter. This was beef wellington night. The beef was well seasoned. It always falls apart though. I don't know why I keep ordering it because it always falls apart and the pastry is usually a little spongy because it absorbs, you know, no too much moisture. But the, the beef was was well done and I enjoyed it and it was cooked to the temperature that I liked. This is the chocolate decadence. You may want to be prepared on this night. Your waiter may ask you early for the dessert because they have kind of a show at the end um, on the screen so they don't want to interrupt you. The last and third restaurant is the Enchanted Garden. This is midship on deck two. Animator's palette is in aft of deck three. And it does, it really looks like a garden. On our second time there, it the seasons changed while we were there. It was so much fun, really cool. This was our second night menu as well. It has this fun charcuterie board. It was delicious. It was beyond my expectation. It had um, really good meats and a very well seasoned artichoke, which was a surprise to me. And but really the highlight was this portobello pasta. This was almost as good as what we had upstairs in Remy's. Like this was 
so delicious. Do not miss this if you like mushrooms. I was very, very impressed with it. My husband got the oven roasted Tom Turkey. He said that was very good. It really had the Thanksgiving vibe going on. I also tried the eggplant curry. That was very flavorful. I'm sad we missed the vegetarian lasagna. I'm sure that was really good based on how good the pasta was. I would definitely get that next time. And then for dessert, um, there wasn't really anything that looked great for me, but some other things we loved at Enchanted was the tuna tartare. That was very good. They had scallops. These were very, very good. They were just as well cooked as what we had at Palo, but sea bass was a highlight. People at another table ordered it for the next night. For breakfast and lunch, you have the option of Cabana's Buffet or Royal Court Breakfast or lunch where you order off a menu. I was really impressed that they offered a la carte lunch on the days where we are in port. A lot of cruise lines only offer a la carte lunch on sea days. So that was a nice add. You also have quick service options for your lunch starting about 10.30. You have the Flo's Cafe. So you're gonna find, that's where you're gonna find your burgers, your pizza, your sandwiches, and your salads. Let's take a look. Cabana's was open for breakfast and lunch, not dinner during our cruise. And note those hours, 7.30 to 10.30 for breakfast. That is later and less hours than we've seen on other cruise lines. You have to wash your hands as you enter and there's someone there to remind you. Sodas are included on Disney Cruise Line at these self-service stations on Deck 11 or at dinner. It is an extra charge if you order soda at a bar. There is a bar all the way at the back of Cabana's as well as outdoor seating. In terms of items, you can get made to order omelets in the morning. It's tucked in next to these big glass cases that hold desserts for lunch, but then they have the parfaits and yogurts for breakfast. They have a lot of baked items, including donuts. You have your standard breakfast items that you can find um, across all cruise lines. You can get bacon every day. If you're a carnival cruiser, you'll get why that's important. I love that they have this little hot zone for the croissants, making sure they stay nice and fresh for you. I also noticed there was a lot of whole fruit available, more than I've seen on other cruise ships. They really want you to stay healthy and have options, and this is a good option to take back to your room for a snack. You could also make your own snack mix or granola, and they do have boxed cereal available if your family has a favorite. Royal Court was open for sit down breakfast where you sit and order off a menu every day for two hours. You can have coffee, tea, juices. Then they have a number of cold items that you can see here. I think it's great that they basically have a charcuterie board for breakfast. You have a lot of choices for yogurt parfaits. This is a very extensive menu. It's one of the larger breakfast menu menus I've seen on any of the cruise lines. They have kind of the kids section, the fresh from the griddle, the Belgian waffles, which are always a favorite. You can get eggs, really any kind you'd like. You have three different kinds of hot cereal. You can also get made to order omelets or you can, you know, pick an omelet made from egg whites. And then they have kind of their signature breakfast. So if you're in a hurry, you can just at, get a basic breakfast plate. You can also style your own with all the different add-ons and sides. I was very impressed that Royal Court was also offered for lunch every day except for the day we were at Castaway Key because all of the crew had to go and set up lunch there. This is unusual. Usually an included dining room is not open on a port day. So this is this is very cool that they had this available. And of course, they have the long list of drinks that are available for extra charge. They had two soups. These soups were also available up on the buffet. They had very good salads here. They had pre-made salads on the buffet. They have a salad station at Flo's Cafe, or they have the salads here. You had your small plates. And then they had true entrees, short ribs, also a large number of burgers, pastas, and then the kids options. I love how they say for children of all ages though. So do not be ashamed if you want the deep fried chicken tenders or the meatloaf. And then a good selection of dessert. You also have the option of a room service. You can access the room service menu on the app, but you still have to call in to place your order. We ordered a cheese plate on a couple of nights to have with the bottles of wine you could bring on board. Each adult in a cabin can bring on two bottles of wine or six bottles of beer. So that was a fun treat to sit on our balcony, have our cheese plate, drink our wine. That was a lot of fun. You have all American fare options, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, mac and cheese, chicken wings, 
pizzas, and then you get more into the freshly made to order sandwiches. Uh, we had the steak panini, which was very good. The picture doesn't do it justice, but I like that you get potato chips. Usually you can't always get potato chips on cruise ships. I would definitely try the BLT next time we go, and the chocolate chip cookies were very good. You can also ask for cake of the day. They feature a different cake every day if you want to add that, or you can add on things that have an extra charge if you wanted particular candies, alcoholic drinks, smoothies, or specialty coffees. And lastly, O'Gill's Pub actually has a small menu that's available throughout the day for an extra charge. Your pub classics, pretzels, burgers, pizza, dip and chips. And one, and one little tip, if you like to stay up late in the adult only area, they put out a buffet in the evening. So like a 10 p.m. little snack buffet that's available. It's got your late night drinking favorites, you know, all kinds of breaded items, some chicken wings, some fried things, some vegetables. So if you are doing some late night time in the tube, you can come here for a snack. So in summary, we really enjoyed dining on the Disney Fantasy. The dinners were tremendous. We loved the menus. We thought the food was very high quality, very delicious, really delivered what it outlined in the menu. I think there's room for improvement with the lunch buffet. A lot of folks we spoke to commented that it felt a little repetitive from day to day. A lot of the stations have the same items. Um, it gets a little confusing as you're going through the line. So I uh, didn't, didn't love that. Um, but I do love that they do have the a la carte dining option in the Royal Court as an alternative. So you, you have a lot more option and availability there. So let me know what you think. Have you been on the Disney Fantasy? What was some of your favorite meals and dining experiences? And remember, there's a lot more Disney Fantasy content right here on the Trips with Angie channel. You can find my overall highlights episode of Trips with Angie. You can also find a ship tour, a cabin tour, how to pre-book activities, how to check in. So head over to the Trips with Angie YouTube channel for more content.